So I'm back and I wanted to get a little bit more clear on how to install this drain valve and the thermostat. So I've laid out in order the assembly of the pieces. The valve comes with this close nipple. Um, you've got to thread this side with the Teflon tape and thread it into the valve. Then the washer goes on then the o-ring goes on and then you slide that nipple through the hole and then on the back side the o-ring goes on and then the nut i've got this side on now on the inside here the o-ring goes on And then the nut and you can see one side of the nut has a recess in it and one side doesn't the recess goes against the o-ring so I'm holding the valve and I'm hand tightening the nut on the back side Get it as tight as I can. Now I'll get the wrench. And then on this one, it's basically the same thing except this isn't a nipple. This is all one assembly. So you don't have to install the nipple. So you put a no ring on it through the hole. The holes are nice and tight. So you can almost thread it in. Okay. You also want to be sure when you're tightening this down that you've got this oriented up to down. And then it's the same thing. The O-ring goes on. And then the nut. This one also has the recessed side. And that goes against the o-ring you do not have to crank down on it real hard with those o-rings on both sides just nice and tight you just snug um, and then you know when you fill it with water to do your test if it leaks you just tighten them down a little bit more but no big deal so there's the assembly okay everything is assembled the gasket on the lid is done I've got all my clamps in place as I would have them when I was running the steel with the exception that I'm missing one. I'll have to find it or get another one. And basically I just have 12 of these clamps, put them at uh, like at each where each number on a clock would go. And that way they're evenly spaced and the seal is nice and tight. These clamps, the best ones I have found to use these come from Harbor Freight, and they're like, I don't know, if they're like two bucks. I think they're like two bucks. But whatever clamps you have will work. But these are the ones that I found work best. Next, we're going to put the copper uh, column, the two-inch copper column on. All right, folks, here we are. This is the copper column that I made. I made it in three different pieces so that I could modify it in the future if I wanted to or if I needed to so I connected all the pieces with a brass uh, union and basically what that is is it, well it's actually a copper union but it's got a brass thread so let me undo this so I can show you so it has this piece here and then this piece here and they come together and then when you tighten it it's a seal but it means you can disassemble it so if someday I decided uh, I didn't like this column I could make a new column and all of this is still good or vice versa if I wanted to change things here this is all still good and still usable on this column it's a two inch column 
uh, it's 16 inches long and I did not solder the two pieces on the ends the reason I didn't is because the sleeves on this two in on these two inch fittings are pretty long I don't think it'll leak with even without a solder so we'll find out but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna leak but also that way if I wanted to lengthen or shorten this column I can just put a new centerpiece in get a longer one or get a shorter one or whatever the bottom piece is a two inch female adapter it's got the same threads here as are on the stainless steel nipple that we had welded onto the lid so that'll thread right on and then on the top side we've got a two inch coupling and then this piece that goes in here that I didn't solder is a two inch to one inch uh, uh, reducer so if I wanted to I could take this piece out and it's still good we can lengthen all of this same thing again I don't think these are going to leak even though they're not soldered we'll find out and then I'll know for sure now the next piece is the riser so after uh, the column uh, the steam will go up and restricted the size from a one inch got another reducer down to three quarter inch and then I've got another I think this is 14 inches then I've got a 22 and a half degree elbow a street elbow that ties into another union but this is a three quarter inch union so that I can attach these two pieces so I can also change this out at some time I may find later that restricting this down from a one inch to three quarter wasn't a good idea and I can change it back and just have one inch all the way or I might find that I want to restrict it even more not sure about all of that so that's why I built it in the way that I did so so that I can make changes the final piece of the riser will attach here and it will start to angle over let me turn this around and so got the three quarter inch pipe here and then I reduce down well first I put a three quarter uh, by half inch by three quarter T this half inch is long enough so that this thermometer uh, the the shaft part of it I don't know what it's called it sticks down in to the center of this pipe so that I can measure the temperature of the steam at the top of the riser before it bends over and starts traveling down towards the condenser and starts condensing back into liquid and then I also put um, this is just a brass fitting that's a, a 5 8 compression fitting so that I can you know connect to my condenser which is next this is the condenser so it's a three quarter inch pipe with a half inch pipe that runs all the way through it. And then I've got an inlet and an outlet for water so that cold water can surround this half inch pipe, cooling down the steam, therefore condensing it back into liquid. And that's what this attaches to. And then I will, I'll show you a video with it all assembled and I don't have a video of me making the condenser there's lots of them on YouTube I may make another I may make another condenser I'll do a video showing you how uh, it's not that complicated uh, the, the main thing to remember though are these this reducer from three quarter inch to half inch will have a little stop uh, that will stop the pipe the half inch pipe from going too far in a normal use but this isn't a normal use we want it to run all the way through most of the time in plumbing you would want that pipe to stop right here uh, so there's a little ridge it's like X like a little stop that pipe won't go any further so you've got to get a Dremel or a file or something 
and file that down smooth so that the pipe will run all the way through this three quarter inch pipe. That way the water will be able to surround it and cool down the steam. And then you just pump water. I just use uh, a little Harbor Freight. Uh, it's like an aquarium pump or a pond pump or something. I'm not sure. Uh, but I just got it at Harbor Freight. I think it was like 20 bucks, something like that. And then that's, those are all of the components of the steel. It's a very simple steel. It's just a basic uh, pot steel uh, with a column. And if you're a beginner, this is, this should be fairly simple to make. It's really simple to run. You don't have to worry about, you know, a, a thumper or a reflux core or any of the, any of the things that kind of complicate the process. It does make the, spot, the process more specific and it gives you more control over what the final product is. Um, but it's not necessary. So as you get into this hobby, you may find that you want to, you want more control over everything and you want to upgrade into um, a flux, uh, or I'm sorry, a reflux steel. But this one works really good. I've been distilling for quite some time and it, uh, it works good. So there's that video. Uh, I'll come back at you with another one. Here is the steel assembled. You got the two inch column down to a one inch riser to three quarter inch to the bend with the thermometer so that you can check the temperature of the steam at the top and then half inch down through the condenser and it'll drip out here and that's it the reason I wanted this column and wanted this as tall as it is is my thought is that there might be some some water condensation that will happen in this column and drip back down so that the alcohol steam continues and as it does it loses water therefore raising the alcohol content by the time it condenses we'll see how well that works this is the first steel that I've built with this tall column design. So I'm going to try it. We'll see.